OK, so this is another example of where you're combining two coordinate systems to solve the question. And whereas last time we combined normal tangential and polar coordinates, in this question we're combining rectangular coordinates for projectile motion and polar coordinates. Now, we've shown that a ball is going to be thrown from an initial height of 2 meters which is um, here and it's thrown with an angle of 30 degrees um, with a speed of 30 meters per second. Now you're, you're first asked to find the, the position of the ball half a second later so this ball is then projected and we, find, we need to find the, the value of the speed and the acceleration half a second later. Now I can already tell you that the speed is going to be computed using the SUVAT equations because it's going to be under a constant acceleration and the acceleration itself is of course going to be subject to a vertical downwards acceleration. We're not including uh, drag effects so this is going to be due to gravity and is therefore going to be constant. So the first stage is to find the the x and y components of the speed at v and um, maybe I'll use this diagram because it's a bit clearer at this point here. So after 0.5 of a second we know that sx and sy is as follows. This is the, the displacement that the ball has travelled. So this is the distance from the, the point that it leaves here, sx, and because it starts from a height of 2 meters the, the final height is 2 plus sy, this one. So the ball has reached this position here after 0.5 seconds. And equally its speed has the x component vx which is 25.981 and vy which is this one here which is just over 10 meters per second so just by application of the Suvat equations we can find the position and the velocity after 0.5 seconds now for the second part of the question we're going to find the information for polar coordinates with respect to the point underneath where it was thrown so this is directly beneath the point where it was released which is this point on the diagram. So for that we need to first know r and the angle theta here. And it's important then to take into account the initial height that the ball was released from. So our r is 15.4 meters and our theta so it's the inverse tangent of this height which is sy plus 2 divided by x that's x and this gives us just over 30 degrees now we have that information it's a relatively straightforward exercise to then translate them into the theta r components so we have our velocity vector v and we're going to use this to get our vr and our v theta components so our v So to translate this vector into the polar coordinates, we know that sort of following this down, this leads down to uh -huh. starts to the origin here. So we know this angle. This is our theta. But in order to translate this vector into the vr and v theta components we need to know alpha and beta now beta can be worked out from the y and x components of the the velocity that we've just calculated above and beta is 21.2 degrees and alpha is then the difference between theta which we've calculated above and beta which we've just calculated and this comes out to be 11.3 degrees so from this we can work out the contributions in the r and the theta directions as follows. So for vr, vr is then v cos of theta. So v cos of alpha. v cos of alpha is vr and vr is equal to r dot and this is 27.3 meters per second. Now v theta is going to be this one. Now this is v sine of theta, v sine of theta, but it's in the negative theta direction. Theta here is positive up, 
and v theta is positive is going to be down. So it's going to be minus v sine theta. And this is equal to r theta dot. So r theta dot is computed as follows. Now for the acceleration, our acceleration is going to be in the vertical down direction, as we've said previously. So our AR component, which is this one, is going to be g sine of theta, but it's going to be in the negative r direction. Because remember, r, and I'll just draw it again here, is positive r is this way, positive theta is this way. So our AR is going to be minus g sine theta, minus g sine theta, and that's equal to the definition of AR that we know from class. <coughs> this is then arranged as before uh, to give uh, make R double dot the subject, and using the quantities that we've computed above, we can calculate R double dot as follows. And of course, exactly the same way for A theta, the theta component of acceleration. Again, this is negative, because it's going against the positive direction of theta, and this is g cos theta. So g cos of the angle theta is this component, and it's negative. And this is equated to the definition for a theta, and again, theta double dot can be made the subject, and the answer is found to be 0.72 radians per second squared. And that's all you need to do for that question.